Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Just days ago, a hideous crime was allegedly committed in the Washington, D.C. suburb of Rockville, Maryland. A 14-year-old girl, a ninth grader at Rockville High School, reportedly was dragged into a bathroom and violently raped. Her two alleged assailants, Jose Montano and Henry Sanchez Million, both arrived in this country just a few months ago. Sanchez is 18 years old and in this country illegally. But instead of being deported back to his country of origin, he was instead placed in the ninth grade and educated at taxpayer expense. This is insanity, of course. It's a sign of a sick civilization at war with itself. A strong country enforces its laws and protects its citizens. That's job one. In the U.S., too often we ignore our own laws and instead allow ruin to be visited on our own people. Well, some people in Rockville are fed up with all this. There was a meeting today at Rockville High School with protests outside by angry residents. We had a reporter there, and we'll tell you more about what happened in just a minute. Apparently, their outrage does not extend to Rockville's leaders, though. The town won't call itself a sanctuary city, but it is, in effect, one. It follows sanctuary policies, and top officials there don't want to think about the connection illegal immigration might have to this crime or others like it. Montgomery County School Superintendent Jack Smith, for instance, said this. We're not going to paint all students who speak another language, all students of a skin color, all students of a religion with a broad brush because of a really terrible incident. So I'm saying no tonight. We're going to take care of our students. We're going to take care of this student who experienced this trauma. But what we are not going to accept is people who say that 25,000 of our students shouldn't get to go to school because they speak another language. In other words, diversity is our strength. Move along. You're racist. Shut up. Thanks, Jack. Well, thankfully, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan does not suffer from the same mental block. Here's what he said. Where my biggest concern lies is with the Montgomery County school system um, and uh, their lack of cooperation and the lack of information they've been providing. Uh, not only have they refused to provide any information to us, but they've refused to provide it to the State Board of Education, who specifically requested more information. Well, this came up at the White House briefing today, and Press Secretary Sean Spicer had this to say. I think part of the reason that the president has made illegal immigration and crackdown such a big deal is because of tragedies like this. Zeke Cohen is a Democrat on the city council of the city of Baltimore, a place that, in effect, has sanctuary city policies, and he joins us now. Zeke, thanks for coming on. So Thank just you, yesterday, as it happens, you sponsored a resolution which passed on the Baltimore City Council which demanded that federal immigration authorities stop enforcing federal immigration law in the city of Baltimore. Why, given what just happened, is that a wise idea? If these guys had been picked up in, in suburban Washington and Rockville, this never would have happened. So why would you encourage that policy in your city? So, Tucker, I am incredibly proud to serve the citizens of Baltimore. Baltimore is a welcoming city. And the reason I introduced this resolution was not to tell ICE not to operate, but to only target violent criminals, such as the young people who allegedly perpetrated this crime. There is no place in our country for this sort of sexual violence. I condemn it full-heartedly, but the vast majority of immigrants in our community are peaceful, they pay taxes, and they contribute. Okay, but we only knew that they were violent criminals after they had raped a ninth grader. The fact is that at least one of them, possibly both, but at least one was in violation of the law already. And because a lot of your state refuses to enforce federal immigration law, he was able to commit that rape. Wouldn't it have been better to get him out of that school and out of this country before he raped this girl? So if he had committed a crime, it absolutely would have been better. But, Tucker, let me say this. What concerns me in addition to this type of crime is also what I've seen ICE do in Southeast Baltimore, where I represent, where just recently a father was arrested after dropping off his son at school. He has no criminal history. His only history is violating his status and returning to this country. He escaped violence in Honduras, just the same way that my great-grandmother escaped violence and persecution in Austria. And we welcome him here. Immigrants built the fabric of this country, and Baltimore is a place that will continue to welcome them. 
You know, it's pretty unbelievable that you would compare ICE, federal immigration authorities, to the Nazis, which you just ineffected, and you did explicitly yesterday, when they're enforcing laws that would have prevented this heinous crime. Would you say that to the parents of the girl who was raped? These are Nazis, these Americans who are enforcing immigration laws? Why would you say something like that? So I extend my full sympathy to these parents. What they've been through is horrific, and to trot their crime out publicly is really kind of shameful, Tucker. And I think that the politics you're engaging in is this sort of Willie Horton style uh, race baiting um, dog whistle where, you know, we don't blame entire groups of people for the, the heinous acts of a few. For example, we're not no, after I'm Dylan not, Roof wait, wait, hold on, murdered hold on. nine people in a church in South Carolina, you know, we I don't say your, that all pardon, white Zeke, people are terrorists. I, wait, oh, so, 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 slow down. I, I'm not saying that all Hispanics are terrorists. I'm not saying anything like that. You're the one who explicitly compared federal immigration authorities to Nazis. Who's using the dog whistle here? Who's making demagogic statements? They're Nazis? You're calling fellow American citizens Nazis for enforcing federal law passed by Congress? Are you really an office so owner? Why would you say something like that? So what I'm doing, Tucker, is comparing the plight of my great-grandmother, who came here from Austria to escape Hitler's gas chambers, to the same fate as my Honduran neighbors, who've come here to escaping violence from their country and just want to build a better life. We also had an no, that's ice actually not recently. What you, that's not what you're saying. In fact, let me, let me read you a quote. This is from yesterday from the city paper in Baltimore. It said, Cohen likened the recent raids to what Nazi Germany did before the Holocaust. So you're, again, for the fifth time, you're accusing Americans, your fellow American citizens who are law enforcement officials, of behaving like Nazis. Don't you think that's a little over the top, speaking, again, of dog whistles? Tucker, again, what I'm saying is that when the Statue of Liberty proclaims, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, that she is calling both to my great-grandmother as well as to my Honduran neighbors. I'm not comparing ICE okay, to Nazis. What I'm doing is to say these are people who've been persecuted back in their home country, and if they want to come here and build a better life in Baltimore, we welcome them. Okay, but you are, first of all, comparing them to Nazis, but the truth is Baltimore has a lot of problems, a lot of problems. It's got one of the highest crime rates in the United States. Some of those crimes are committed by people who are here illegally, illegal aliens, as you know. Three years ago, one of them raped a nine-year-old girl right after you became a sanctuary city. Again, as you know, you've had something like 10 murders in the last week, and you're spending your time telling law enforcement not to enforce the law. How does that help the immigrants you claim to care for? So, Tucker, here's the real story about Baltimore, is that we are a city rebuilding, and the resilience in my city is incredible, and just because people like you go on TV and bash us doesn't mean that Baltimore has to take it. I'm proud to represent my district. I'm not bashing you. I'm reciting your crime statistics. Most... Do you know what they are? Really? Do, do you have any yeah. sense of what the murder rate is? What's, what's the murder rate in your city? Do you know? So last year, we had over 300 homicides. Each one is tragic. I completely agree mm -hmm. with you. I was a teacher in West Baltimore before I became a city council person. And I will say that our school system is struggling. Uh, our law enforcement is struggling. But it is not the fault of immigrants. And in fact, Tucker, what we've faced for a very long time is depopulation. And the immigrant community, particularly the Central American community, which you continuously bash on your show, has actually come I'm here and rebuilt. I'm not continuously bashing the Central American community. By, by the way, that's completely false. My only concern is for the people who are already here. Does it make a school better when people move in who don't speak English? Is it good for the kids who are already in the school, do you think? Does it improve the education? Is it fair to the taxpayers? Have you thought about that? I think the greatest asset in our city is our diversity. And I was joined by an amazing group of immigrant youth yesterday no, in but passing no, what this is that resolution. Doesn't, hold on, so, slow down. That doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. I asked you a sincere question. Does it improve a school when a lot of people move in who don't speak English? Does the school get better? Uh, ab absolutely. So if you're talking about a city that used to be a million people and is now down to 630,000, having folks come here and participate and pay taxes, sending their kids to our school is a blessing. And we welcome those children. 
And like I was saying, we had a mm -hmm. great group come to City Hall yesterday to advocate for their community, to speak out against intolerance, and to help us pass this resolution. And that's why I'm so proud yeah. to represent my city on the it's city so council. It's so sad. I mean, maybe your city's depopulating because you had 316 murders last year because you don't take it seriously and you spend your time with frivolous nonsense like this, which doesn't make the city better. It's just sad. It's, it's depressing to watch it's, a formerly great city like that languish under leadership like yours. I'm sorry. Tucker, Zeke. it's only frivolous when it's not, when no, it's it's, not your family. A, this is Thank absurd. You. This is, you know what? It's, it's sad, and you're not providing a serious answer, unfortunately.